This might be the ultimate beginner photographer lens for Nikon Z mount and let me explain to you why. Hey guys, Vitaly here with Touch Life Studio. Today I'm gonna review and talk about this Viltrox Pro Lens 27 millimeter f1.2 for Z mount. Now, uh, full disclosure, Viltrox actually per gear sent this to me for review. They did not ask me to say anything nice about it. So all of my thoughts and opinion about this lens is just gonna be mine alone. So let's dive right in. Now, one of the first things that you will notice, like this is a pro lens and it's made for the APS-C body, such as Nikon ZFC, maybe Nikon Z30, Nikon Z50. Now, I don't have a crop sensor cameras, but I do have full frame cameras and I have tested this lens on the ultimate, most beautiful, retro style camera that in my opinion Nikon ZF and I also tested on a Nikon Z9 which is also a full frame camera 45 megapixels now one thing is just I want to get out of the way yes once you mount this lens to a full frame camera now ZFC is a 24 megapixel camera and you're going to have about 10 and a half or so megapixel files once you mount this to a 45 megapixel camera such as Nikon Z9 or Nikon Z8 you're going to get about 20 megapixel files so I'm not complaining about that at all because very frequently and I, when I personally shoot and I shoot weddings and portraits and a little bit of sports, I frequently actually downsize for the file sizes for myself because when I have to process so many files, smaller files I, it actually is a lot easier. Now let's talk about the basically lens itself and how it comes in. So the lens comes in in this beautiful, beautiful, shiny, glossy box. And once you open the box, you'll find a quality control label. You will also see the instructions manual, like with any lens you will see. There's a warranty card, which is was interesting with the budget lens that you get, uh, such as this one. You actually get a very nice pouch bag, uh, maybe something similar that you would also get with typical Nikon Z mount lenses. And um, Nike, the lens obviously is wrapped up in a plastic bag. You do have a front cap, you have a rear cap and a lens hood. Now let's talk a little bit about the body itself. Now the lens is well, well built. I want to say this is a pro lens. It actually says on the uh, lens body itself. And the pro lens, I can really tell the quality and how it's made. I've been trying to compare this lens a little bit to the other lenses that I have. Now, the closest lenses that I think I can compare this one, at least in what I have personally, uh, that I personally own is the Nikon uh, Z 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. Uh, now, the reason I'm comparing to this one, it's because it's relatively close when it comes to the focal length. Now, once you put this one on the full frame, full frame body, it's about 40, 40.5 um, millimeter focal length because of the 1.5 crop factor. And the other one is also I have recently I was sent this um, young new basically YN lens f1.8 for Z mount. And I can tell you that the quality of this lens of the Viltrux 27 millimeter 1.2 Z mount lens, I think it's actually better than uh, the Nikkor uh, native lens. Now, what you will see here with this lens is once you open up the, there's a red orange rubber gasket. So this is a weather sealed. It's not weatherproof obviously, but it is a weather sealed lens. You also have a USB-C port basically for firmware upgrades. And that is a little bit different. I do prefer this design more than the one that I received for the young new lens because the port is actually located on the side. So obviously if you have a weather elements and whatnot, uh, that can be impacted a little bit more. Now when it's on the inside, obviously it is fully enclosed. You also have an aperture ring, and this is what I think makes this lens so unique because you have an aperture ring. And why this 
I think this is an ultimate lens, especially for somebody who is a uh, young photographer, somebody who is a beginner photographer. Once you mount on a lens on a camera such as ZFC, where you get a 24 megapixel files, or ZF, like this one here, one of the things that um, people would really appreciate is you do have a shutter dial, you do have an ISO dial, but you don't have a dial like you would have previously on the kind of older lenses. Now, you can certainly use the dial up front here, but if you really want to have this full experience, it is, it is really nice to have this aperture ring. And this aperture ring has those clickable stops. Now, you can actually change it. There's an on and off switch on the side here. And now the ring becomes very silent, which would be great for video. And I'm going to address this a little bit further. But it is so satisfying. It is really satisfying. If you really want to enjoy photography, you know, not only about the image quality in the end, which is very, very important, but it's also about the process and having this clickable ring. I'm going to see if you guys can actually hear it. It is absolutely beautiful. Now the lens also has this function button that you can uh, program for any users that you typically have. And you do also have a 67 millimeter filter thread. Now one of the unique things about this specific lens, it, it is 1.2 lens. Now one of the first things that I've done is I actually have taken this lens to a mole just to test it to see how it works when I went with my child for um, a quick walk to uh, to get a, to a coffee shop and I was really truly surprised because for the most part in the mall it's semi you know dark conditions you do have obviously light but it's not as it is outside and for the most part I was shooting at 1.2 and the image quality coming out of this lens and I and I try to compare these images and to see the color you know for example look at this image here where I took basically uh, a gumballs and it is so sharp I was very surprised you can I'm gonna also talk a little bit about the bokeh a little bit later on but you can see even on this image the bokeh how it's showing up and shooting for the most part at 1.2 it makes this lens absolutely beautiful because if you're looking to get a 1.2 lens for example like a native Nikkor lens it is $2,000 lens now this lens comes in at 545 US dollars I'm gonna link in the description below the links where you guys can get this lens I don't get any commission is basically goes back to wheel trucks one thing to note is that this lens does come in three different mounts it's a Sony mount and then you have in the uh, Fuji mount and now you have in the Z mount for Nikon lenses unfortunately from what I can tell it does not come in a Canon mount Sony Canon folks uh, but I'm sure there are probably some adapters that you can use if you really want to adapt this lens again for $545 at 1.2 it is kind of unheard of and it is a full autofocus lens it is a full autofocus lens that you don't typically find at this price point. Now, let's talk a little bit about the sharpness. So I've taken this um, lens outside and I have gone to, well, let me talk about a little bit about the sharpness that I've taken at 1.2. You can really see once you start zooming in, and this is just a digital zoom right now that you can see on the screen how sharp it is at this Starbucks logo here it's beautiful and then there's a you know you can see sections of the bokeh it is it makes it very very compelling argument why this lens can be so useful if you're a beginner photographer if you're really looking to get this bokeh shots and you want to get that sharpness you're really really not going to miss anything if you were to get with the to go with this lens especially if you are shooting on the crop sensor cameras like Z30, Z50, ZFC, it's really, really going to complement your camera so, so well. And look at these pretzels, right? I mean, look how sharp these images are. Absolutely phenomenal. Now, I have taken this lens also outside. And I try to compare to see what it looks like during the day and let me get to the some files here now i've taken pictures of this plant one of the beautiful things about this lens is the focusing distance it is 
Um, I'm going to put here in the screen above me um, what's the focusing minimum focusing distance, but you can get super super close. And I was photographing this little um, uh, Lego little guy, and you can see how close I am to uh, this little object and how sharp it is. I was really blown away. Guys, I can recommend from the start that this lens is going to be, it should be an absolute lens in your kit. It may not be your primary lens because if you're a full frame shooter and you're looking for those, you know, full megapixel files. But if you're going on a trip, if you are doing some landscape photography that you're not going to be necessarily blowing up, man, it is so, so well controlled here. And uh, let me take you to another images here that I have taken. Now I took to my uh, children's concert at school. And again, because it's uh, very dark and not very well lit, man, these images are so clear. Again, I can't really justify enough this lens. Now, most people are not gonna photograph their shoes, but you can see, I photograph my shoe, how sharp it is. So once you start zooming in, this is a digital zoom that you see right now. And it's uh, so well done. I'm really impressed by this Pro Lens uh, from Viltrax. This is probably one of the better lenses that they have released. I know they also have a 75 millimeter, uh, I believe 1.2 lens. And if you're looking for something a little bit more wider view from Viltrax, you will not be disappointed. Obviously, the time will tell how well this lens is gonna hold up. Now, I've had the Z 50 millimeter 1.8 eight lens already for about, I want to say three years at least, and it's holding up very well, right? So I can really vouch if I'm photographing weddings, portraits, I will be very happy with this 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter lens. Now, I don't know how this lens is going to hold up, right? Um, but based on my first assessment and based on the images I've taken, I think this lens is going to hold up very, very well. photograph outside that was slightly raining and uh, again you can see some of the images where raindrops and again came home absolutely nothing you know obviously the camera is what I sealed the lens is what I sealed really really no concerns now some of you might be uh, wondering what is it like to actually use the focusing ring I would say okay comparing to these three lenses that I have in front of me the 50 millimeter native lens is just a little bit almost like loose okay when i'm looking at this young new 50 millimeter 50 millimeter lens it's it's definitely a little bit cheaper made you, you can feel it's almost like just kind of this rubber ring going around the barrel now when you take this one a viltrox lens it feels just right it kind of reminds me of those art lenses made by sigma and um you know, for just a little bit over 500 US dollars, this pro lens is absolutely amazing. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the bokeh of uh, this lens. Obviously, 1.2, the reason why many people would buy this lens is because they want to get this beautiful uh, background in uh, bokeh. So I've uh, compared the stills and video now as you can see in stills when you are at 1.2 and those bokeh balls let's say right in the middle you do have much more controlled environment and they are nearly um, circular once you start going off to the side basically corners they do turn more into those uh, lemon size lemon shapes and um, but once you go to about 2.0 the uh, for the aperture the bokeh balls become round all the way whether you're in the center whether you are on the sides it really doesn't matter and as you can see in this video here how I compared when the at f1.2 the bokeh balls were on the sides and they really look um, more like a lemon shape but once I go to f2.0 
those the bokeh balls becomes round basically on the outside and again very very well controlled but you know uh, many lenses like that you know you take 85 millimeter 1.2 lens uh, Nikon of native lens you're gonna have a uh, those lemon shape uh, lemon shapes um, for the bokeh balls now I also compare this lens for the autofocus uh, for stills and video for stills it is great okay it's not probably as fast as the uh, 50 millimeter 1.2 1.8 I'm sorry but it is fast enough for if you're shooting portraiture if you're shooting some kind of a landscapes or environmental portraits it's going to be absolutely absolutely enough for video now one thing that I was concerned about is cheaper lenses such as this young new 50 millimeter 1.8 was that lens when it comes to video I do not recommend there was a lot of focus breathing now when I compare this Viltrox lens for focus breathing for video specifically I was a little bit concerned but because I actually have seen some videos um, for the uh, Fuji mount as well as Sony mount and it was a little bit jumpy it wasn't very well, well controlled I'm not sure why is it different on a Z mount okay on Nikon lenses as you can see in this video it is relatively well controlled I could use this lens for a, some kind of a static shot if I really wanted to where a person is sitting and just take videos it would be absolutely beautiful and as you can see right now you know my hand gets closer to the uh, to the lens gets further away it's not bad it's really really well controlled for the budget affordable lens you really can beat it now I have also con compared to the 27 millimeter the SE lens actually that's recording me right now on Nikon Z6 II and it is much better controlled as you can see I can get my hand cl up close and there's really absolutely no focus breathing here super well controlled now this one is maybe not as well controlled but for static shots it will be absolutely enough and so the last thing I think I want to really address um, Viltrux very well done um, so who is this lens for so on the full frame body this is going to become about 40 millimeter lens and I know that many photographers are actually looking for that 40 millimeter focal length because this is how our kind of natural vision and view of our human eye is now some people say maybe 50 millimeters okay you know we don't want to you know it's kind of splitting here but it is very well done it's great for the aperture ring you know the reason I think this is why it is an ultimate lens to even learn photography especially on something like ZFC or ZF is because you do have your shutter dial you have your ISO dial and now you have your aperture ring and everything is on the body you don't have to use the front dial the back dial on the body itself um, it is really enjoyable going on the trip I absolutely recommend I'm gonna be going the trip this summer I will be taking this lens with me because uh, it's just you know it's not only about the image quality in the end it does matter but it's also about the process um, and if you're into photography oh man you really really gonna enjoy that this lens is great for environmental portraits if you're looking to take pictures of families or something like that um, I guarantee you it's gonna be well and sharp lens uh, for that and um, if you're also looking for indoor events um, where you have a low light situations it's going to be great right so if you're shooting at f1.8 if you're con concerned about those bokeh balls just make sure that uh, maybe the subject is somewhat in the middle um, or the bokeh ball somewhere in the middle depending how you're taking the image uh, for group shots this is going to be great so I highly recommend um, this lens and um, thanks Viltrox for sending this to me I appreciate it if you have any more lenses of this quality I would love to test them out in the future if you consider sending that to me and other than that guys thanks for watching it if you're first time on my channel I appreciate stopping by um, if you've been here before uh, welcome back um, please like and subscribe if you haven't so already so that I can make more videos like this for viewers like you thank you Oh,